Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. We're into October, what many people would consider to be the first full month of the autumn. Of course, it depends on your definition and I'm not going to enter the debate here. But before taking a look ahead to what the first half of the new month may or may not bring, I just wanted to say a few words about the last one. September turned out to be a record breaker. The central England temperature of 17 Celsius there, the mean for the month as a whole, beat the previous high set in 2006, 16.9. Across the UK, the mean was 15.2 and that equaled the 2006 value. That's all history though now, so what can we expect during the next couple of weeks? As usual, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 3rd. At the outset, we've got high pressure sitting just to the south, and there's an Atlantic flow pushing across the UK. It's bringing patchy outbreaks of rain, showery rain, mostly to the west. As I run this, not a great deal changes in the short term. The wettest conditions, the windiest ones too, are in the north and west of the UK. The south generally staying drier. Then as we go towards the weekend, colder air starts to move down from the north across Scotland during Saturday, perhaps reaching Northern Ireland and parts of Northern England there. There's a band of rain just along the border between the colder and warmer air masses. But in southern and central regions, it looks like staying mostly dry because that band of rain fizzles away and high pressure then builds back. Into the early part of next week, the high pressure stays dominant to the south and winds go back to a southwesterly direction. So temperatures are likely to be above the average, but I'll look at those, of course, a little bit later. Just to finish here, what we see is cold air moving down from the Arctic making another attempt to push down across the UK. There's some heavy rain there in Scotland. There's a lot of uncertainty, I'll say now, just about the balance between the colder air mass to the north and the very warm one to the south, just where that boundary is going to be at times across the UK during the next couple of weeks. Here's the jet stream sequence and upper air temperatures. The UK just there, jet stream, pushing across central parts of the country. And once I run this, what we see is it's often close to the UK, but that very warm air from the south does move northwards for a time. I like this though, how it finishes, because Wednesday the 11th of October, summer is here and winter is there, that blue and purple shade and indicating the cold Arctic air sweeping southwards. The oranges and reds, the very warm air. The UK, somewhere in the middle. So. It would suggest a good deal of uncertainty as I'm going to be looking at between, as I say, between the colder air masses to the north and the warmer ones to the south, just where they're going to be positioned. Looking at the two metre temperatures, so the ones we can expect down at the ground level, at least based on that computer model and just assuming that it's on the money. Wednesday the 4th of October, 16s or 17s in southern and central regions, cooler as you head north and west. Going forward so to Friday and temperatures are climbing as that warm air moves up from south to southwest. 22 there in central and eastern counties, a few degrees lower once more as you head northwestwards. Into the weekend, Saturday, and this looks like it could be unseasonably warm, at least in southern and central Britain. 24, 25, maybe 26 Celsius. Colder there in Scotland, we've got that Arctic air trying to push down, at least on this model run. Going ahead to Sunday, that cooler or colder air has moved down across much of the northern half of the UK, so values there into single figures. It's staying warm or very warm for the time of year in the south. But I wouldn't be at all surprised to see that warm air further northwards at this point. Quite a few of the other major computer models are showing that to be the case. So just take this with a big pinch of salt. Forwards to Tuesday, and on this particular model run, the warm air has once more pushed northwards. So after that colder plunge across the northern half of the UK on Saturday into Sunday, the warm air then moves upwards across the UK once more, 22, 23 Celsius in central and eastern counties. Quite a lot happening through the first week. And when I'm talking about warm air at the 850 HPA level, it really is 
notably warm for time of year. This is the Morgrex G Ensemble plot for London, showing uh, temperatures at that level, so about 1500 meters over our heads. What we see is they shoot up from around the 4th or 5th of October and reach a peak on the 7th or the 8th, but the peak is truly very, very high for any time of year. It's close to 20 Celsius. Often we tend to think in the summer months of heat wave conditions being possible when values at this level are around 15 Celsius. So to see, see from approaching 20 in the southern half of the UK in, well, effectively at the end of the first week or into the second week of October, exceptional stuff indeed. In terms of what happens in the days which follow, already we're seeing that big spread developing. It just highlights the uncertainty, as I've been discussing, about where the boundary between the warmer and colder air masses is going to be positioning itself. Rainfall. The charts here are the aggregates for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models. The rain distribution profile is similar on both of them. Wettest in the northwest of the United Kingdom there, particularly western Scotland, the green and the orange shading. Mostly dry in the south and relatively dry in eastern Britain as well. Moving forwards to the charts for the 0 to 10 day period. The general distribution is similar, again, wettest in the northwest, but there are indications here of more rain reaching southern and central counties, particularly on the ECM chart, which is on the left. I think it's probably just worth highlighting as well, if you saw my presentation last week, when I brought these charts up, they both were indicating through the 0 to 5 day period at least, that there would be dry conditions in the south, the southeast, the GFS, I think, in particular was indicating that. It didn't turn out to be right, as I suggested would probably be the case at the time. Parts of the southeast and East Anglia have seen significant amounts of rain recently. It's been patchy, though, but as I say, in places, the totals have been quite high. In more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare to each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 10th of October. High pressure to the south, having a good deal of influence. We've got this very warm air moving northwards once again, as I've just been discussing. It had the colder air pushing down across the north through the weekend, and then the warmer air returns. The Canadian model also has high pressure dominating at this point with warm air, very warm air moving northwards really across virtually the whole of the UK. But at the same time, the uh, German icon has low pressure from the north, having more influence, the warmer conditions a little bit further south. Likewise, with the European ECM, low pressure there across the north into Scotland, high pressure to the south. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, that's quite similar as well with areas of low pressure there, influencing things across Scotland and high pressure keeping it drier as you head southwards across the UK. So taking them all together, I think there is quite a bit of uncertainty about how things are going to play out towards the end of the first week, just how far northwards really high pressure is going to be controlling the weather and keeping it drier and warmer. So a greater risk of rain as you go north. Also, that's where temperatures will be lower. But on the whole, there is a prospect of it staying warm or very warm for this time of year, at least in the south, more changeable in the north. Well, with that uncertainty towards the end of the first week, how are things shaping up through the second week? It's just important as ever to emphasise that it's really just about the general direction of travel at this range, the probabilities of different scenarios playing out. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top, the thick purple line, the ensemble mean is staying a little bit above the 30 year norm, the thick black line. Now, with that said, look at the spread which is showing up here. The lines, each one representing one of the runs in the ensemble model, are going off and, and diverging very, very significantly. There's a big, big range of possible outcomes in terms of temperatures at this level. A few cold runs, and I think they could probably be called cold runs now with temperatures dipping down towards minus five Celsius, at least for a short time at this level, of course, not down at the ground. 
and still some very, very warm runs. That's the 15 Celsius line there. So even through the second week, there are a number which are approaching 15 degrees at 1500 meters. It's very difficult, I think, to draw too many conclusions in terms of temperatures through the second week at this level. I think I would say they're probably going to be trending down from the first week, but I don't think we're going to be too concerned about temperatures down at the ground level, but I'll look at those in a moment. The rain risk, shown by the number of spikes along the bottom, is pointing towards a lot of dry weather continuing through week two, but there will be some rain around in this part of the UK. So two metre temperatures, as I've just been indicating, probably not a major factor, not as warm as they were through the first week. You can see the oranges there, uh, which indicate 21 to 25 Celsius, but through the second, it's really the lighter oranges and yellows. The yellow is going for 11 to 15, the, this lighter orange, 15, uh, 16 to 20, so and a, a little bit of light green there. On the whole, probably close to or a little bit above the average, but there is that possibility of it being significantly cooler at times. Up to Manchester, well, once again, there's a big, big spread there in terms of air temperatures. The risk of rain is greater than it was on the in, in, in London and the southeast for more spikes here and they're bigger, so it's ongoing through the second week. Also, we're reaching the time of year when it's worth having a look at the snow row. It's at the very bottom here. For those of you who don't know, the snow row shows the number of runs in the ensemble model which are forecasting snow to fall on a given day. So these go ahead 16 days. For 33 runs which have been plotted, so towards the end there, around the 15th, 16th, 17th, values are reaching one. What that's showing is that one of the 33 runs is forecasting a few flakes at least of snow to fall. It has no bearing on the possibility of accumulating snow. I always make this point, it could just be a few flakes of snow mixed into an outbreak of rain. Or, or a shower. It doesn't mean a winter wonderland. And one out of 33, of course, is a very, very low chance. But as the weeks go by, those values, of course, should start to increase. Two metre temperature data table for Manchester, values lower than um, on the London one. The yellows dominant here, the 11s to 15s also, there's more light green. So six to 10s, maybe some chilly days getting into the mix as that colder air from the north pushes down at least across the northern half of the UK into northern England, maybe central counties. It's the chance it obviously diminishes the further southwards that you head. Up to Glasgow, close to the average in terms of air temperatures, but again just emphasise that big, big spread. The runs are really diverging a lot. They're all over the place through the second week. Rain, well, wetter than Manchester, which was wetter than London. Some big spikes there, so quite a lot of rain around. Temperatures, the two metre temperature data table here is showing more light green than on the Manchester plot. Still quite a lot of yellow, so 6 to 10s and 11s to 15s. A little bit of dark green there, just one or two runs going for cold conditions. But temperatures trending downwards across as you head northwards across the UK. And I think it's more than just that normal uh, lowering of temperatures as you head northwards. It's, it's also connected with the fact that that colder Arctic air mass is more likely to be pushing down at times into the northern half of the United Kingdom with high pressure continuing to have more influence further south. Rainfall, according to the ECM uh, ensemble probability charts, each one of these shows the uh, percentage risk of five millimetres or more of rainfall in, on the first three days of week two. They tie in quite nicely with what I was discussing earlier, wettest in the west, the northwest especially drier in the south, also in the east there, even parts of northeastern England show it having a reasonably high chance of staying mostly dry on some of these days. Moving forwards to the uh, days four, five and six through week two, the distribution remains very similar on each of the 
given day. So some high rain totals look likely in the northwest and with a high probability of them happening. Often dry, but not completely dry as you head down into uh, the south and the southeast of the United Kingdom. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot, so this is for Friday the 13th of October, unlucky for some, is that going to be the case with our weather? Well, because of that big spread showing up in the ensemble, and this is simply averaging them out, it's quite difficult to read too much into it, but the general pattern is for areas of low pressure there to be having a say in the north, high pressure more likely to be keeping things drier in the southeast. But as I say, it's difficult to read too much into that. The mean surface level pressure data table going forward through the second week for York also has quite a big spread showing up here. The yellows, 1,011 to 1,025 millibars. Some of those runs are above the average. The majority of them probably are. Some are a little bit below it. The greens there, all the runs are below the average. The oranges, they're, they're not, not a huge number of the orange runs showing up this week, but there are some. They're all significantly above it, 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. On the whole, pressure probably close to the average according to this, but it's, it's difficult once more to read too much into it because of that wide spread of outcomes. To try and summarise, Week one will often be dry in the south. The risk of rain increases as you head further north and west. Also, windy periods in the north at times. It looks like it's going to become very warm, particularly in southern and central regions. And during the first weekend, temperatures could well reach the mid-20s Celsius. Uncertainty, though, about how far northwards that warmth is going to extend and whether or not colder Arctic air will be pushing down across Scotland and perhaps even Northern England and Northern Ireland for a time. Week two, a big temperature spread with colder air into the north on some days, warmer in the south for the majority of the week. Windy periods, though, could affect all parts of the UK and there is that rain risk also in all regions, but Certainly the signal is for it to be wettest in the north, especially the northwest. So, uh, there we have it. It's, I think, very difficult to be confident about how things will shape up as we go through the next two weeks, but the general trend is for warmer and drier conditions to be focused on the south, cooler or colder and wetter ones in the north, and just where that boundary between air masses will be for much of a period is quite uncertain and of course it will have a big impact on local weather conditions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did then please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.